Support for this episode is provided by CMT Orange Tools, offering the finest quality tools at an affordable price. Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I'm John Peters. And for maybe the past 10 or 15 years, these two router bits have been my go-to router bits for simple but classic beadboard and chair rail design. One's a small roundover bit, and the other is a small chamfer bit. In this video, we'll go ahead and make the moldings, and I'll have the dimensions for all the moldings that I make in this episode on the website post. We'll get started with the baseboard molding. This is a one by six piece of poplar. It measures three quarters by five and a half. You could also use finger joint pine, or you could use MDF. I don't suggest using MDF in a bathroom or kitchen because of moisture. The first thing I'm gonna do is use the chamfer bit to put a slight chamfer on the top edge of the baseboard. Since I've got the chamfer bit in the router, I'll move on to the next piece. This is the piece that goes under the top of the chair rail, and I'll get started by ripping a board at two and a quarter. I'm still using the chamfer bit set at the same depth as when I cut the profile into the baseboard molding. The next piece of molding is the shoe molding and we're still going to use the chamfer bit. We'll just lower the bit about half the distance. Because it's not very safe to cut thin strips on the table saw, I'll use the router to cut the profile in on both sides of the board, and then I'll set up the table saw so the off cut is the molding. I've measured in and marked the molding at one half of an inch and now I'll draw a line on the table saw insert and I'll make the rip and after I make the first rip I'll readjust the fence so the second rip will be at that line. Essentially I'll need to move the fence in about a half of an inch. So now I'll readjust the fence so the edge of the molding is at that line. And then I'll make the next cut. Here's the two pieces of shoe molding from the thin board I started with. You can imagine if I had started with a 1x6x10, x I could probably get as much as 80 feet of shoe molding from one board going back to the router after every rip. Okay, so now I'm done with the chamfer bit and I'm gonna move on to this piece of molding at the top of the chair rail. So I'll remove the battery and change over to the roundover bit. For the molding at the top of the chair rail, I'll rip a piece of MDF at an inch and one eighth. These are two different profiles you can get with the one router bit. This is just a slight roundover, and this is a slight roundover with a little fluting, and that's caused by setting the depth of the cut a little bit deeper. For this molding, we want just a slight roundover on both sides.
Okay, well, pretty simple design, just using two router bits to make the profiles, but I think it's a classic look, and this is what I've used in my kitchen and in my mudroom. And to help explain it a little further, I'll show you the casing that I used along with the back band so you can see how all these moldings work together. Here I'm ripping the casing from 3 quarter inch MDF at 3 and a half inches. Next, I'll rip the back band from 3 quarter inch MDF at an inch and a quarter. Now I thought I'd take a minute and explain the moldings and show you how they all come together. This is a 1x4. I've created my own 1x4 by ripping 3 quarter inch MDF at 3.5 inches. If you buy a 1x4 at a home store or lumber yard, it will measure 3.5 by 3 quarters of an inch. I've created my back band by ripping 1 by material, that's 3 quarter inch wide material, at an inch and a quarter. The baseboard is a 1x6. A 1x6 measures 5.5 by 3 quarters of an inch. The baseboard dead ends into the back band. We made the shoe molding using 1 by material. That also dead ends into the back band. There are a few different styles of beadboard. This is a wider style, but you can also get a narrow style. So just take a look and see what's available and what you like. The top piece of molding was made from one by material. It's ripped at two and a quarter and it has the chamfer. And then you've got your last piece of molding and that's the top of the chair rail. It's one by material ripped at an inch and an eighth with a round over on both sides. Well, a pretty simple design, but I think it looks great. Made with just two router bits and it definitely has that classic look. I've used this design on several projects. I used to have a home in Vermont and when I renovated the kitchen, I used this design. And I'll probably put a couple pictures up at the end of the video because I'm really proud of that project. And then I used this same design on my kitchen here in New Jersey and in my mudroom. And as far as the height of your chair rail, that's really up to you. In my kitchen, I went up about 34 inches and then out in the mudroom, I went up to 60 inches. So it really comes down to what you think will look best in your home. As far as using MDF, I avoid using MDF on the molding that comes in contact with the floor in kitchens and in bathrooms. So in this case, that would be the casing, the back band, the baseboard, and the shoe molding. And that's because MDF absorbs moisture and expands. Anywhere else in the house, MDF is a good choice because it's a very stable material. Just make sure that you prime all sides. So that's it for now. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. To see how I installed a similar version of this chair rail design, click on the link in the description. And be sure to follow me on Instagram for more helpful home improvement and woodworking tips.